Um, my name is Alice Fothergill. I am one of the directors of Disney Nature Bears. My name is Keith Scully. I'm the other director. Bears because they are fantastic, engaging animals, you know, and we particularly like the fact that um, they have this dual personality of being the teddy bear, the lovely bear that you want to take to bed with you as a child, but they also have the name grizzly because they're thought to be ferocious, vicious animals. Of course, neither of those things are absolutely true. And Alaska because it's the most beautiful scenery in North America, wonderful wilderness, and full of lots of bears. What we like to do with the Disney Nature films is to really concentrate on characters in a way that you would expect in a normal movie with people. And I think we've probably done that sort of far more so than in pre in anyone else has made a bear film. And we've focused very much on a character-driven story. And... Um, and that drives the, the sort of narrative. So I think overall, I mean, that's our kind of trademark for Disney nature, strong character-driven narrative with shot totally in the wild. We um, wrote a script at the beginning of what we would hope to film based on our knowledge of bears, and, and we decided from the very beginning we would follow a mother with two cubs because 50% of the cubs die in the first year. So we, we really thought that would be a good drama. But then a lot of things happened which we hadn't expected. For instance, we didn't, in our wildest dreams, expect to film wolves and bears. And so the script is always being rewritten by the animals. But at the same time, always we are looking for the story that will hold the whole movie together and keep the audience engaged right up to the 80th minute. When we go out into the, the the field and we're looking for our bear, you encounter lots of bears, but you're always looking for one that is relaxed as possible around people. And you know, there's you find some mother bears who are, who are not comfortable having you too close. They're constantly looking at you and so on, so so forth. And um, when we sort of found a, a bear that was completely relaxed and uh, was very trusting with us, that was the bear we ought to film. And so it, it's really as simple as that. The bear almost chooses us. For me, the best moment was uh, seeing the battle, but it's the best and the worst, actually, the battle between the rival male and Sky and her cubs when we thought that the male was going to kill the cubs, and the cubs ran away, and... We followed them for a long time down the beach, trying to see where they'd come, and they disappeared, and we weren't sure what had happened to them, and then about an hour and a half later, we saw the mother and the cubs reunited. So that was the worst moment, and also the best for me. And I think for me, it was um, when the wolf um, approached Sky and the cubs. Uh, it's very, very rare to have a wolf that um, will... Uh, accept your presence like a bear so seeing the wolf interacting with the bears was a completely new experience for us I don't think anyone's seen that before or filmed it and um, the moment when um, the wolf looked though it might take one of the cubs we didn't know how it was going to play out we didn't know what the outcome was going to be so that's always a very very tense moment and uh, fortunately it ended well. So it was a combination of knowing that you're witnessing something very few people have seen, you're filming something very few people would have seen, um, but also there's an outcome of an animal that you're rather fond of, or animals, uh, and um, it's, it's very, very tense.
For those bears, the six weeks when the salmon are running, they get most of their food for the whole year. So the whole need to get the, at the salmon is really, really important part of the story. And it's very exciting because they're in the waves trying to catch them. They follow them all the way up the river. And so you can't do a bear film in Katmai without telling the salmon story. And the salmon story itself is amazing, this extraordinary migration. And it was important because if Skye didn't get some salmon by the end of the summer, uh, her cubs would probably die the next winter in hibernation because she'd run out of milk. So we always knew salmon would be a very important part of our movie. We shoot a, a huge amount of film, probably 300 times more than we need. And um, while we're making the film, we, we keep doing little editing sessions to keep pace with what's happening to build the story. But then at the, um, the end, we, we spend really from uh, almost six months in the editing room finally honing the, the, the sort of story and the sort of pictures. So it's a... It's a very labor-intensive time. But what we're always trying to do is to extract the very best moments, the most interesting ones, to illustrate our kind of story, but also to keep the, the pace of the film fast and uh, the interest of, of the film high. We worked with a fantastic composer uh, in the, the U.S. version called George Fenton, and because in America, America is very proud of Alaska, you know, and, and the movie was very much for the American audience. So that score had a lot of Americana, you know, a lot of guitar and folk country type music. Um, when it came here to, to France, Jean-Francois decided that uh, it would be better to have a, a less American score, which I think was a good decision. Our next movie is called Monkey Kingdom, and it's about some fantastic monkeys that live in Sri Lanka in wonderful, wonderful Buddhist temples. Uh, and it's a lovely story of this female um, um, a monkey who starts very much at the bottom of the pile at the beginning of the movie and through the movie works her way up. It's a sort of Cinderella story. <laughs>